Maybe you guys can see me. So sorry, the wind is really howling here, and uh, we're at a colonial site, and uh, I have my, my buddy Bo uh, down here hunting with me, and I get a lot of, or I see a lot of questions online um, about uh, how do you find a, a home site, or, you know, or a homestead um, in eastern North Carolina? And there's a, there's a lot of different ways to distinguish how to find a house site in eastern North Carolina. So I'm going to show you uh, one way that may help you, you know, in your venture, in your adventures out to find treasure and, and home sites uh, here in the state. So I'm going to turn you around and kind of go over with you, you know, what I'm seeing on the ground and maybe give you some key ideas of what to look for when you're out in the field. So uh, let's go ahead and I'll flip you around and we'll go ahead and walk through that now. So if you're walking through a field or if you're driving down the road and the sun is shining, look for glass glistening, you know, in a field. Uh, you know, after you get permission, walk out in the field and if you start seeing uh, like little giblets of brick like this, brick, brick all in here, brick all in here. That's a pretty good indication that there was some sort of homestead here. There's a piece of blue feather edge pottery right there. There's some porcelain in here, porcelain pottery mixed in here. Um, we know that there is a colonial home site on this spot. Uh, there's been quite a few flat buttons found in here, quite a few silver coins found in here. Um, so we're here today just kind of poking around. And uh, we're hoping to dig a coin or a flat button or, you know, maybe even a gold coin. Who knows? You know, you never, never know. So, you know, just but just walk along and you just look for uh, indigenous rocks that, you know, normally aren't laying around in the field. Um, flowers uh, or daffodils. Um, real good indication of a home site. So if you're ever walking through a field, just look around. Look for giblets of brick, look for pottery. Um, normally any high sandy ridge um, near the water is always a plus. Uh, and you never know, you just you just never know. Uh, so get your detector out. First get permission, that's the first the most important thing is to get permission. So get permission, walk the field without a detector, look see if there's anything laying on the ground. If there is, go grab your machine and get to hunting. And that's what we're gonna do right now, is we're gonna get back to hunting. And I'm sure I hope you guys can hear me because the wind is really blowing here. Uh, but we're gonna get back to hunting and if we find something really good, we'll flip the camera back on and show it to you. All right, let's get at it. Okay, I just wanna stop and show you guys this right here. Uh, this is a main, like key factor of there was a home site here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at. Uh, and it, it this, this piece probably dates I don't know, early 1800s maybe, 1820s, 30s, somewhere in that range. So uh, let me show you what I'm looking at. And when you're in the field, make sure you look for this too. So right here, I'm looking at a piece of black glass. Typical in uh, colonial sites and early 1800s sites. So look at that. That's probably off of a wine bottle. Uh, or maybe a whiskey or something. If you hold it up to the light, let's see if we can do this on camera. You can see like a a green or amber tint to it. That's when you know it's old. Thick, that dark green, dark black glass. That's normally a, a good indication that you're on an early site. So we're gonna leave that right there, but just wanna give you guys that little tip, that little pointer, and uh, something else to look for. So let's get back at it. So I just dug my first good signal and I didn't get it on camera because I really thought it was going to be a can or a shotgun shell but I got it in my hand here and it actually it turns out that it's a round ball. Uh, so that's about a 45 or 50 caliber round ball somewhere around in there. It's a little, a little big small to be a 69 but uh, that's definitely a sign that they were here and hopefully we'll find some real treasure, buried treasure. Let's try and see. So I just found a really cool gravestone. And I just want to read this to you guys. And I'll try to uh, get it in. I don't want to get this name in here. Um, but it basically it says, 
sacred. And then it says, to the memory of his name, uh, born October 19th, 1831, died near New Orleans, April 8th, 1850, aged 18 years, three months, and 20 days. I thought that was pretty cool that they actually broke it down into the, the years, the month, and the days uh, that, this, that this teenager died. Um, so I just want to share that with you guys. I thought it was pretty cool. See this cliff right here? Well, the land used to be right in here. Uh, and when we got Hurricane Florence that came through Eastern North Carolina, it totally wiped out a major chunk of land. So what I thought we would do is I thought we would just walk the beach and maybe see if the hurricane has uncovered anything. Uh, years past, I have found a couple of old bottles, you know, tucked up in the root systems of these trees. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna kinda walk along and look and see what we can see. And uh, we'll go from there. Maybe we'll find something cool. Maybe we'll find some buried pirate treasure up in one of these root masses. You never know. So let's get to looking and find, see what we can find. So I'm still walking the beach and I'm just looking for, you know, I'm looking at all these rocks and everything. Really cool piece of pottery right there. And I'm just, I'm kind of looking for really anything. I'm looking for Indian pottery or broken bottles or just treasure or anything really. Look up in this stump. You guys see any treasure in there? See any treasure? How about in there? No? All right, let's keep looking. We're gonna walk down the beach here a little ways and look around in these root masses and all and see, there's a Listerine bottle. I don't know if you can see that or I'm getting out of the sun. A nice little Listerine bottle. It's a screw top. We're gonna leave it there though. It's not really the age we're looking for. Now this right here, this is interesting. This, uh, normally you see these, um, colonial sites. I'm not really sure. Uh, they used them somehow to, for something to do with the boats. The boats would uh, come off the water and they'd shove them up here on these logs. Normally there was two or three coming out. But I guess it was kind of like a dry port. You know, I, I assume if the boats could sit on they could unload the cargo at all. And uh, you see them a lot at, at colonial sites. Let's keep looking. Now you guys let me know if you see any treasure and uh, we'll come back and get it. Can I see any? I don't, not yet. A couple bottles in there and some iron, some brick. Nothing yet. See some stuff up here. Let's come up here and see what might be hiding in here. If I don't break my neck doing it. All right, let's see what we got in here. So, this looks like a turn of the century trash pit. There's some bottles down in the sand there. It's like a, maybe a teacup. Ooh, that might be a whole teacup. Let's, let's dig this out and see. Nice oh, piece of a plate. Nice decorative design on there. Let's see. I see some broken bottles in here. I see some brick giblets. It's definitely a trash pit. I don't see any treasure. There's a really cool plate. Got some design on it. I wonder if it's got a back mark. Let's see. Nah, yeah. What does that say? guys can see that or not it says uh american traditional cannesburg pottery cannonsburg pennsylvania let's look around a little more some more plate oyster shell this is a good indication that uh of an early site um anytime you see oyster shells oysters were a big thing right on up through the civil war so anytime you see oyster shells mixed in anywhere, especially in a home site, uh, you know you're in a pretty good location. 
See any treasure up in there? Let's keep looking. There's some bone. Is that human bone? Could be. Could be arm or leg bone. We'll keep looking. Let you know if we see anything really cool. Okay, so I just want to stop and show you guys this. Um, this is really cool, and some people may have never seen one of these, but they're really common on coastal areas. Uh, it really anywhere near a big body of water or coastal areas. Um, early colonial sites up into maybe the early 1800s, not really sure. Um, but this is a really cool piece, and I just want to show you this. So this is actually, if you can see that or not, out of the sun, this is a ballast stone, okay? Uh, it's just basically just a rock. But you see how it's curved, on, it's rounded, you know, on the edges. Uh, that's how you know it's not like a bag of concrete or anything. It's got a coloration to it. It's got some rust on it. But um, this is called a ballast stone. And they, what they would do is, on the, when the ships came from uh, Louisiana or England or wherever, whatever port they left out of, uh, when they were going to their destination, they would load the bow or the stern of the ship down with ballast stones. And uh, let's say they didn't have enough, you know, cargo weight to keep the buoyancy right in the boat. So they would put ballast stones uh, in the boat to kind of lower it down in the water, you know. And then when they got to port, they would normally, they would take the ballast stones out, chuck them on land, get rid of them so the boat would come back up. And then they'd load it with new goods. And if it wasn't sitting just right, they'd add a couple ballast stones in there. So that's what that is. That is an early ballast stone. So remember that, guys, if you see that at a, at a site that you're hunting, more than likely, there was a port nearby. I'm a dork, I know, but it's just a really cool piece of history. I thought you guys might would like it. And, I, and you know, I just looked to my left here, and I see somebody has already been out here. There's a, that's possible, a small stone. A piece of depression glass. It's got a nice purple tint to it. Actually, I might keep that, That's because that's actually pretty cool looking. Um, I think I'll, I, I think I'll hold on to that actually. Um, so yeah, man. So let's uh, let's keep looking, and uh, if you guys see anything at all, something I don't see, let me know, and I will come back and I will get it and we'll look at it together. All right, let's get back at it. So I'm still working my way down this beach here, and I'm meeting up with Aqua Chigger. We're gonna see what he's got. See if he's dug some treasure. <laughs> uh, well, I tell you, I got a, uh, a doorknob and yeah. lock. Yeah, that's nice. I thought this was a, uh, what do you think? What does that look like? It looks you? like a reed base. Well, I wasn't thinking yeah, reed base, but I was actually thinking like a candlestick holder. Oh, yeah, here. could be, could but be. But it's got plastic in the bottom, yeah. so I, I don't think it's that. Um, let's see. I got everything mixed together. Oh, sure. So I just have to, like, pull out a handful. Hey, that's a... The uh, yeah, pipe stem down right there. there. Uh, I actually have a couple coins, but they're modern. I got a flat one in there somewhere. Probably have to look at them in the truck though. Cool. If mind, cool. Cool. Treasure. Oh, we got the treasure. <laughs> All right. But we're working trying to beat the tide. It's actually still going up. It is still out quite yeah, a ways. Yeah, so we have a little time yet. So I'll show you this. You just pointed this out. There's a clay pipe stem land right there. We think that the bigger the hole, the older the pipe stem. Anybody knows, let me know. So I just dug this cool little flat button. It's got a nice concave front on it. It's a nice early button. Uh, but I'm walking along right after I dug this, and I see something on the ground that I'd like to point out. This is something else you guys should look for uh, when you're looking in these fields. This is blue feather edge pottery. All right, so feather edge pottery, blue feather edge pottery, to the best of my knowledge, dates to around 17, I just wanna say 1750 to around 1780 or 90, somewhere around in there. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm a little off, maybe 1760 to 1790. If you start seeing green feather edge, that's when you're in an older site. Green feather edge normally dates from around 1720 to around 1740. So I think that's right. Green feather edge is 1720 to 1740. Blue feather edge 
is from 1740 to about 1780. I think that's how it goes. And if I'm wrong, you know, you guys can correct me, but pretty sure I'm right on that. And how you tell it's feather edge, see the, looks like little feather, little blue feathers on the edge of the pottery. So that's, a, that's definitely what you want to see to tell that you're in a colonial site. So let's keep going and see if we can find us another flat button. So I got a signal here and it's, 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 uh, it's barely squeaking at me. But I look down and I see it. So I'm swinging across here and it's just barely chirping and squeaking at me. Ah, I gotta find it. Okay, there it is. And I look down under the clover leaves and right there is a flat button laying on top of the ground. It's a little bitty cuff. It was a little squeaker. But we'll definitely take that and add it to the collection. So I think that's going to about do it for me today. <clears throat> Guys, I'm, uh, I'm tired. My feet are hurting. Uh, I think I might actually might be rubbing a hole in my side of my heel for my pants being in my boots. Uh, it's been three days of pretty hard core hunting, you know, so I'm, I'm pretty tired. And I uh, didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night. So I'm going to do the wrap-up video. Uh, not a lot to show, but there is a few things here. So we'll go over them real quick, and uh, we're going to call it a day. So let's go over that and uh, we'll see you on the next one. So here's what I got. Uh, I got a marble and uh, some aluminum. Got a round ball. Uh, a couple clay pipe stems in here. Nice little flat button there. There's that piece of feather edge. Uh, a couple pieces of melted lead. I think this might actually be part of a pewter oyster spoon. I'm not really sure kind of feels like it and looks like it but I'm not positive on that I uh, got some nice Indian pottery pieces in here uh, these actually came off another beach I did not get a video because the wind was brutal and I didn't think you guys could be able to hear me uh, but these are some nice pieces this is a, a what is it we really don't know it's cup shaped uh, you can tell it's about four inches across maybe uh, it's round. We thought maybe it might be some sort of Indian artifact. Maybe it actually it might be the top of a pot. If you guys, uh, you Native American uh, hunters that look for that kind of stuff, if you know what that is, comment and let me know. I got this. Uh, we think this might be a tool or maybe a grinding bowl or something to that extent. It's definitely some sort of artifact it's not a not, not a naturally formed rock like that uh, but that's about it i think bo's still uh messing around out there in the field somewhere uh but when he gets back uh i'm sure he'll want to do his wrap-up video and uh we're gonna split ways and he's gonna go back home and i'm gonna go to bed first i'm gonna drink me a beer but then i'm gonna go to bed um, so anyways, I'll catch you guys on the next one, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the video, click the subscribe button below. We'll see you next time.